Jim had drawn the short straw for the night shift in the engine room. He would have volunteered if he hadn't. Night shift was nice. The lights were dimmed aboard the ship in the off hours, stern to stern. Captain's orders. It allowed better regulation of ceridium rhythms for the rest of the crew and let Jim avoid the dazzling brilliance that passed for day aboard the cruiser. He supposed it was his fault, born and raised in CN, where the noontime sun was a little brighter than the full moon on Earth. The engine hummed softly as Jim performed a routine maintenance. The other man on duty was Stuart, about as salty a sailor as Jim had ever seen, his hair that grew only in patches and a scar that ran from jaw to eyebrow beneath an eye patch. Jim was more than a little afraid of Stu. Fluid will need a... changing. Jim nearly leaped out of his skin. Drawing a shaking breath, he responded, Maintenance logs show it was changed eight hours ago. Maintenance logs are wrong, Lana. Changed up the fluid, but didn't clean the filter. Always clean the filter. Drain, clean the filter, fill. Not so hard, is it? Uh, n no. Jim checked the dipstick and noted the reactor cyclins was a touch discolored. Well, tell that to the day shift crew. Filter needs cleaning every time the fluid's changed. You're not like Austin, I can tell. Thinks because he studied engineering he knows how to be an engineer. I know this engine inside and out. Come here, I'll show you how to clean the filter. Always use a number two brush. Number three's too stiff. And if you use a number one, you'll be here all shift. Jim let a lot as they worked, and duties finished almost two hours before the end of their shift. Stu sat down on one of the benches and drew out a flask. You're a hard worker, Jim. You listen to what I tell you. So now let's talk about the airlocks. Airlocks? Jim asked, taking the preferred flask. It held rum, strong enough to make his eyes water, and sweet as candy. Yeah, the, uh, airlocks. You'll use them now and again, replace ablation plate. Drive needs work on the outside. You'll make your way outside from time to time, but it's the airlocks you need to look out for. What do you mean? He took another swig and passed the flask back. You're not the first guy in space, Jim. And you certainly won't be the last. There have been others out there, you know, and... Not all of them make it back planet side. You mean watch out for mechanical failure? Yeah, and, uh... Turn off the lights when you get back in. Lights? Why? There is a, a story, an old one. I heard it on a night like this when I was your age. Ever heard of the Machana? Sure, heard about it in school. Lost to the stars around Tau 3 held up as a prime example of design failure. Oh yeah. Cool it had to be jettisoned from outside. It had to be done once a week or the reactor would overheat. Did they tell you in the academy why they couldn't? No, I suppose not. It's not a popular story. Well, they gave the job to a new kid. A sort of hazing. Coolant was just a gel back then. It was real funny to tell the new kid he needed to clean his suit before they could let him in. Well, they gave the job to the kid, and of course, he gets the coolant all over himself. No way not to. They tell him he's gotta clean his suit before they let him back in. So he starts to panic, yeah. Because he's already low on air. He flails around a little bit. Lose, loses most of his tools. 
Everything but his number six scraper. The folks inside see him and tell him to stop. But he's not listening. Because he thinks that he's gotta clean his suit. So he starts at it with the scraper. And you can't clean a suit with a scraper. It just can't be done. And sure as shit the suit gets a puncture. Now the boy was in a fuss before, but now he's in a panic. They're shouting over the radio to get inside the airlock. It's good enough, it was a joke. Finally, the kid gets the message and pulls himself in. He's bleeding air fast and pulls off his helmet. He's half blind, sweat in his eyes, out of breath. So he reaches to open the door, but the airlock's faulty. The other door blows off, vents the atmosphere in the airlock and takes the kid with it. Holy shit! So the crew's watching him out there. They don't tell you in the academy, but vacuum doesn't kill you like they used to. Or, they used to think it did. It's a hard death out there. Your skin swells up. Your eyes get so dry they'll crack. And there's no relief until you suffocate. And suffocate they did. It was a full ten minutes before the boy quit moving. But now they've got a problem. Cause the kid still got his tether on. So the crew draws straws to see who'll go cut the tether to let him drift free. And it's the first guy that draws the short straw. So he suits up and while he's doing it they lose sight of the body so the guy see he goes to the other airlock and he's just about to cycle into it and he looks through the window and standing there's the kid so of course there's panic and they vent the airlock send the body back out into space they fire up the engines and gun it for home but the tether snaps and the body floats free but the mechanic never made it home react overheated no survivors yeah there was three air locks on the machana all logged by the computer they analyzed the black box on it and do you know what they found? The last airlock? Cycled from outside. The kid's still out there, Jim. In a panic, trying to get back inside the ship. But the ships run dark outside. Right. Except... Except for the airlocks, Jim. So we turn off the airlocks, so we can't find them. I... 